In this section, we'll discuss Newton's third law. If you have two particles, particle one and particle two, the force of particle one on particle two is equal and opposite to the force of particle two on particle one. And that's the essence of Newton's third law, that these forces are equal and opposite. This law turns out to be intimately connected to the conservation of momentum for a closed system. For example, the closed system is me standing on the Earth. Of course, the Earth's gravity pulls me down with a weight, W. That force of my weight is equal to about 180 pounds. So that's just my weight. That's the force of Earth's uh, gravity on me. That's corresponds to about uh, 800 newtons uh, of force. I can convert that force into an acceleration by dividing the force through by my mass. And of course, what you find is that everyone feels an acceleration for the Earth's gravity of about 10 meters per second squared. Now the force that the Earth exerts on me is exactly equal and opposite to the force that I exert gravitationally on the Earth. So just as the Earth pulls me down with 800 newtons of force, I pull up on the Earth with 800 newtons of force. But because the Earth is so much more massive, the acceleration that results from my gravitational pull on the Earth is really tiny. So there's the acceleration of Brian on the Earth 800 newtons divided by the mass of the Earth, 6 times 10 to the 24 kilograms, gives an acceleration of 10 to the minus 22 meters per second squared. So if I were floating in space next to the Earth, that's the amount of acceleration that I would induce on the Earth. Now we can ask the question, how long would I have to wait for this acceleration to induce a sizable velocity on the mass of the Earth? So if we take a velocity of about a meter per second and then use the acceleration that I induce on the Earth, we find that the time it would take for the Earth to move a meter per second due to this acceleration is about 100 trillion years. So if I were floating in space next to the Earth, it would take 100 trillion years for the Earth to accelerate to about a meter per second velocity toward me. So coming back to Newton's third law, we find that we can calculate the net force on particle 1, F1 vector, as the force of particle 2 on particle 1, plus all external forces on particle 1, so anything else in the universe that influences the motion of particle 1. Same is true for particle 2. F2 vector is just the force of particle 1 on particle 2, plus all external forces in particle 2. So we can think about that graphically here. Here's particle 2 and particle 1. We see the forces between the two particles and then the external forces coming from the rest of the universe. Newton's second law tells us how we can relate the time derivatives of the two particles' momenta to those forces. We see that uh, P1 dot is equal to F1 vector, of course, and that's, as we said already, F2 on 1 plus all the external forces on particle 1, and then P2 dot is just equal to F1 on 2 plus all the external forces on particle 2. And now the next step really shows us why Newton's third law is so powerful. And it also allows us to justify treating even very large extended bodies as particles. If we calculate the total momentum vector for P1 and P2 together, that's capital P, it's the sum of the two momentum vectors. If we're interested in the time derivative of that total momentum vector, then it's just P1 dot plus P2 dot. And we know what each of those is individually. You can see the sum of all the forces on both particles down there. And now Newton's third law tells us that the forces between the particles actually cancel out. And so that tells us that the time derivative of the system's total momentum vector is given by the sum of these forces, and the part forces between particles 1 and 2 actually cancel out. So that the time derivative of the total system's momentum vector is just the sum of all external forces. This is also why we can treat even very extended objects as particles, such as the Earth. If we just make sure to keep track of all parts of the Earth together, then we can treat it as a particle on its own. We don't need to worry about all the internal forces of the Earth system, all the cats and dogs and people walking around the surface of the Earth. Those are just part of our system, and we're calling all of those one little particle. There's no exchange of momentum inside the particle that changes the total momentum of the system. We can easily generalize these expressions for two particles to an arbitrarily large number of particles. So if this is our system of particles, particle alpha being acted upon by particle beta, and we look at the net force of on particle alpha, that's going to be F alpha vector, that F alpha vector is the sum over beta 
not equal to alpha of the force from particle beta on alpha plus all the external forces on alpha. And according to Newton's second law, that sum of forces is going to be equal to the time derivative of alpha's momentum vector. We can sum over all the particles in our system alpha to get both the total momentum vector for the system, capital P vector, and then the time derivative of the total momentum, P dot. That sum looks like this, that bottom line, the sum over alpha of all of those things inside the parentheses. It's a little bit messy and ungainly, so let's take an example uh, where we just have three particles and see how the sum works out. So here I have three particles, one, two, and three. Uh, particle one is blue, particle two is orange, and particle three is pink. The time derivative of the system's momentum vector is going to be the sum over alpha of all of that stuff in the parentheses. And so let's write that out for this particular example. So for instance, the first value of alpha is one. And so we get in the parentheses, the summation over beta not equal to one of those forces there. So we've got the force of particle beta on particle one plus all the external forces on particle one. The next value of alpha is two. And so we get that term uh, on the bottom line there in the parentheses, the sum over beta not equal to two of all forces uh, on particle two from particles beta plus all the external forces on two. And then alpha finally is equal to three and you get the bottom line there. If I then take this sum over beta and calculate all the forces of particle beta on particle one, we get an expression that looks like this for particle one. So in this case, it's the forces of particle two on particle one plus the forces of particle three on particle one, plus all the external forces on one. We get analogous expressions for particles two and three, and what we find is that all of the internal forces cancel out according to Newton's third law. You can see the circles and the, the lines connecting the different forces that mutually cancel. And so in the end, the time derivative of the system's total momentum vector is just the sum of all the external forces on all three particles.